I, I kind of like a master in there somewhere. <laughs> what what do you have now? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's fine. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Boris Effects Live. Um, this is our virtual SIGAF presentation. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Um, while we're obviously super disappointed we can't be at SIGGRAPH in person this year, um, we're excited to share some amazing presentations all day today. Starting off with um, Steve Wright, Master Nuke Trainer, who's going to take us through some advanced tracking and paint techniques in Newt with the new Silhouette Paint. Um, so let me do some kind of house cleaning as we start. We, Like I said, we are live all day today. Um, you can go to um, BorisFX.com um, to see the full lineup. Um, and one thing I would love to point out is in every single presentation today, we are giving away to one lucky winner a um, annual subscription to the Boris Effects Suite, which is a new product we just released last month, which is basically like the Uber Boris Effects product. It is every single thing we sell. Sapphire, Continuum, Mocha, Mocha plug-in and standalone, um, Silhouette standalone in Silhouette Paint. So it's basically like everything we sell. So one um, lucky viewer today in each session will be winning a suite um, of everything we make please like subscribe share um let us know you are out there say hello from wherever you are all across the world we have um all our product managers and boris effects staff in the chat so please say hello to them um let us know you're out there and um share this feed on your socials if possible um, we love to kind of see that everyone is out there watching so Let's get into today's presentation. Um, let me introduce our guest today, um, Steve Wright, Master Nuke Trainer. Hello, Steve. Good to see you. Howdy. 
Um, in addition to Steve, who will be presenting today, we also have Ross Shane, Chief Product Officer for Mocha, is with us today as a guest. Hey, Ross. Hey, folks, and uh, thanks a lot to, first to Steve for joining us today. Yes, oh, this is going to be a Mr. fun one. Uh, <laughs> also joining us, Mr. Marco Pellini, um, the product designer for Silhouette Paint. Hey, Marco. Hi, Hi everybody. everybody. So, like I said, um, before we kick off with Steve, feel free to ask any questions you have about um, about Nuke, about Silhouette Paint in the chats. Um, we'll be looking at all those chats, and we'll bring in your questions live um, to Steve's presentation. Um, so definitely, if you have anything's on your mind, feel free to jump in and uh, ping us, and we'll bring it in. Um, also, um, at the end, we'll kind of look to see any big questions. We'll, we'll have some Q&A time at the end. Um, or Steve. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, the way to enter to win the Boris FX suite is to sign up at BorisFXLive.com. If you click over to Boris FX Live, you'll see there is a, um, a little sign up form on the bottom. You can enter your email and that's what we'll be picking the winners per session. So if you're watching on YouTube or watching on Facebook, just jump over to Boris FX Live and sign up to win. Okay. Without further ado, let's get into the fun stuff. Steve, I'm going to hand it off to you and uh, sit back and enjoy. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me switch on my uh, screen sharing here. Um, doo -doo -doo. Entire screen and allow. Okay. Um, now I need to find my nuke. <laughs> there it is. I'll minimize this. Have you got my screen? Yep, looks great, Steve. Marvelous, marvelous. Okay, so uh, when Boris FX and Ross Shane and the boys asked me to take a look at Silhouette Paint, I was um, really excited. Uh, I'm a nuker, and I, I teach nuke, I train nuke, I am nuke, and I've done, you know, a lot of paint in nuke, but this Silhouette Paint, like, is a whole nother level. They carved out a chunk of the Silhouette product and made an OFX plugin for Nuke, and it is absolutely amazing. It brings big time feature, fill, feature film paint capability. This, this is 32-bit floating point, high dynamic range, 8K and higher resolution. I, I mean, this, this is the big time stuff. And the thing I loved about it is no matter how many strokes, it never gets heavy. So let's, let's take a look. There's fabulous productivity tools and you're gonna love this stuff. Okay, so here, here's the deal. I want to take the, uh, the paint out this tower here, okay? See, I got a wobbly camera, okay? So we're gonna have to do some tracking and stabilizing. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna go get my uh, silicon, my sapphire paint and it's just another node. Boom, there we are. So I'll open it up. And then it'll open up the uh, Silhouette Paint interface right over my Nuke. I'll just give it a name. We'll call this uh, Tower. And I'll create a project. Okay, now I'm going to cache the clip. Now, this is one of the really neat things. I love this about Silhouette. When you cache a clip like this, it is cached. It doesn't uncache because you clicked on something. So this, this is really cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to track on this tower here, and then I'm going to use a clone brush to paint out just the first frame, and then I'm going to let the auto paint feature paint the whole shot for me. Watch out. Here we go. I'm going to jump to the beginning of the shot. We'll switch over to the Erota department. I'll grab a shape. I'll just use a nice little rectangle here. Then I'll punch up tracking. Now, one of the neat things about Silhouette Paint is you have three trackers. There's a point tracker, there's a silhouette planar tracker, and the ever popular mocha tracker, my personal favorite. So we'll just select that. The defaults are gonna work just fine. So let's just track this thing. And it'll only take it a moment to uh, track the whole shot. And I'll tell you in the meantime, that the uh, point tracker, you can just like in a nuke point tracker, you can place a few points on the screen and you use the point tracker when you want to do something that has a lot of features you can lock onto. Now, the silhouette planar tracker, that's where you have a, like a flat surface, like a wall or a, a floor or a ceiling, 
where you've got a number of features that you, a feature tracker can lock onto. And of course, the Mocha tracker is another planar tracker, but it uses photogrammetry, a different technology for tracking. Okay, and we're done. So I'm going to name this because we always got to be a very good tower tracker. Okay, so let's go back to the paint department here. And I'll jump back to frame one. I've got my tracking done. So I'm going to set up a clone brush. So I'll take a clone brush here. And I'd like to, you can't really see it so good. They are the size of my brush. So what we have up here, we can just gain down the viewer a little bit and set the size of the clone brush. I'll set my clone offset and we'll just paint it out. Don't worry, we're going to come back and fix that. <laughs> Zoom in. I'll shrink down a skosh and get rid of the little fine detail that was down here. All right. And then I would like to smooth all this stuff out because that's kind of, uh, kind, of, it's kind of edgy. So I'll bring my brush back up. I'm going to come down and I'm going to lower the opacity. I want to make a nice uh, semi-transparent thing here and use that to kind of feather the edges a little bit. Okay, whoop. Um, view the output. Ah. I'm sorry, I got my uh, offset wrong. Okay. Um, or is this foreground, frame one. Transparency. What am I doing? Steve, you might want to set um, the source to the source there. Yes. To output. Foreground. Oh, set, oh, set the force to out. Oh, so I don't pick up my own uh, paint. There you go. Which is actually, it's actually, right. it's fun to, fun to show that sometimes when you make a little, you know, things like that, it, it's fun to pick out, uh, you know, it's a good learning moment too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so the, the bottom line is I've got the, uh, got the thing painted out on just the first frame, but if I go to the next frame, obviously it's not there. Okay. So we're backing up to the first frame now. And what I'm going to do is propagate all those paint strokes over the entire length of the shot. Okay, let me rehome my viewer here. We do that by first selecting the paint strokes. Then I'll come down to the transform and say, I want to use that tower tracker that I did. And then I want to set it for a match move. And then all frames, I want to do all frames and play. Okay, so now what it's doing is it's actually painting every single frame for me. Okay, so I can go have a coffee break. Uh, of course, this is a short shot, and this will be a very quick demo. And the beautiful thing about this is not only is it a time saver, but it's also a quality thing because it's going to do a mechanically perfect paint stroke every single time, and I'm not going to have any chattering or any other uh, bad effects. Okay, so. That is the auto paint feature. Paint one frame, blast it over the whole clip. Now I'm gonna show you a different cloning uh, technique and I'm gonna paint out these birds using a, a completely different methodology. I'm going to hold the, the last frame. So I'm gonna set my source. Uh, I want it to be the last frame, which is frame 48. Okay, so I want to I want to clone from frame forty eight. Now here is my um, the the um, uh, <laughs> onion skin. Thank you, thank you, onion skin. Okay, so uh, that shows me where my uh, where my stuff is, and I can also, if I want to see one hundred percent foreground or background, I can do this. Set it to the default, you get the 50-50 the mix. Okay, I jump to frame one. Now, see, my problem is that it's not tracked with my shot, of course. So 48 has these birds, and these are all, all my other birds from the other frames. And uh, so we're not really, we're not tracked at all. Not a problem. All I have to do is tell it that I want the source, which is frame 48, to be match moved with using the same tower transform and now my held frame 
is being tracked with my clip. You can see the held birds there. All right, then. We're ready to go. So I'll turn off the onion skin. Push in. Make a smaller uh, bird size brush. Oh, let me set my transparency there. And there we go. Okay. And bird gone. Boom. There you go. Next frame. Bird. Bird. So you see how quick, easy, and accurate. Absolutely no chattering. You're not gonna you're not gonna have any problems at all over the entire length of the shot. Okay. So to save time, I've got I've got a finished shot to show you so you don't have to sit through all of this. So I'm gonna quit this and say, no, don't save that. And I'll switch over here to the done shot. Okay. Well, there you go. Auto paint, take out the Eiffel Tower by painting one frame and blasting that paint over the whole shot, and then using the track, same track data to hold my input master for the clone source for getting rid of the birds. All right. Moving right along. Okay. Um, okay, um, this seems to have, seems to have, um, clobbered me here, so I'm going to restart these screens. Sorry about this, little housekeeping here. I had them all stacked up, apparently Nook did not like that. Okay, so. Lots of love from the audience, Steve. Lots of mm -hmm. love from the audience. Um, lots of love, uh. I agree with Fedikin605. I can also listen to Steve all day. It is a treat to learn from him. <laughs> so, <laughs> great job. Shucks, Mr. Yeah, and also, I'd also mention while Steve's get his, uh, his screen cell set up there for you, that Steve is the author of some really great uh, visual effects training books. I'm going to paste uh, the, a link to his compositing book that you can find on Amazon. So really, really great stuff. Oh, thank you, Ross. I'll give you 10 bucks after the show. All right, where's my commission? <laughs> hey, hey, one of those also, things. someone had a question regarding uh, tutorials in Fusion. Um, since uh, Silhouette Paint is an OFX plugin, the process that Steve's going through is very similar to what you do in Fusion. So the operation is the same. You would just hook up the sources a little bit different in Fusion. Yes, but once you're into Silhouette, it's the same from app to app. Definitely. Absolutely. All right. One, what we're going to do here, thing, quick, yeah, guess what we're doing here. In, let me just Yo. jump in quick. One thing in the spirit of SIGGRAPH, like um, a few questions about educational licenses online. Um, if you are a student, um, please go to BorisFX.com and sign up for a free student license for all of our products. Um, we, we give away a 12 month subscription uh, of everything we make to all students. So um, if you are out there a student and you're watching Steve, um, definitely go to borisfx.com to request a student license. All right, Steve, go ahead. Why, thank you. Yes, education, very important. Okay. <laughs> now, hey, to save time, I've already tracked this shot. In fact, I can show you my tracker here and play that for you. So uh, I've already done my tracking, and I'm going to do the same gag, the autoplay gag. But this time, it's going to be a wrinkle. I'm going to use the blemish brush. Now, the blemish brush incorporates a blur plus a grain operation. But the real punchline on the blemish brush is I wanted to show you this feature here. I've never seen this before. This is really cool. The old split screen. You see what's going on here? Uh, what it's doing, it's taking the settings of my brush and it's applying it to the entire frame. And I can wipe over my target area to make sure it's doing the job. Without this, you have to do a stroke no, that's not right. Delete it, set parameters. Do a stroke, uh, delete it, reset your parameters. So you iterate like that. Here, you can just dial it in while you're looking at the picture. For example, let's say I think maybe I could reduce the blur radius on this. So I'll, uh, I'll drop the blur radius down to two. Uh, no, that did not do it. You can still see my blemishes. So I'm going to put it back to the defaults, which were really quite good to begin with. And I'll turn off the split screen. That is a real time saver, okay? 
All right. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, set this up to be a blemish size brush and make sure I'm on frame one because, again, we're going to be propagating this thing. So we're going to blemish, uh, blemish, remove some of the uh, more ugly things. This poor gal. Too many candy bars. Okay, so there you go. You can see um, coming and going. All right. So now that I've got it all painted out, what I'm going to do next is track it over the entire length of the shot. So we'll select our paint strokes. Select our uh, tracker, which I had named Jaw Tracker. Okay, I want to do a match move on all frames. Go. And it's going to paint this thing in no time at all. And now I'm done. It's Miller time. Okay. Blemish. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And again, I love the split screen gag. Okay, that is so cool. That is such a time saver. Okay, next. The held frame demo. A personal request from Ross. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I love that. I love that blemish feature too, or, or the uh, the being able to preview a paintbrush before you actually paint. That's a huge yeah. feature for me because, like you say, you're always painting, doing little tests, undoing, tweaking parameters, and it's it's just it's a real huge time saver. That's right. Also, you know, frustration. It gets really annoying. You know, um, and so, the fact uh, too anyway. on those. On on those brushes that at any point you can go back because the history is dynamic, right? So that's so, so right. cool too. Yeah. Okay. So what I got here is I've got this green screen shot and then I've also got this background plate here. Now this is a held frame. Okay. It's a still photograph. So my problem is when I do my comp, uh, I've got that stranger sitting in the background that I really don't want. Okay. <laughs> so I'd like to paint that out in a very painless and uh, simple way. And now here is a second photograph. Now it's the same area, it's just the composition wasn't what I wanted from my uh, karate shot, okay? But it is the same area and the dude is gone. So I wanna clone this to a reveal, a paint through of this area up into here with my super silhouette paint. Okay, so let's go get ourselves a silhouette paint node here. And going to hook up the other picture to input one. Click held frame because we're going to do a held frame. Open silhouette interface. And I'm going to have to save this out. Give it a project name. Held frame. Create project. All right. I'll fire up the clone brush and that'll get me uh, the information on where I'm going to get my source. So I'll set the source to be input one. If I turn on the onion skin, you can see it there. And again, there's the 100% background, 100% input one. There's the onion skin. All right. So I'd like to shift my input, my source, interactively. So I'll turn on the interactive and I'll use this to push it around. I'll get it close. Now I'm going to switch over to the fine detail mode. Check this out. Now I show this technique in my book. What you do is you take an, uh, make an inverted copy of the image, sum them together, and then you take the average. And you get this. And the beautiful part about this is, of course, Horace had the wisdom to build it right into it. When you get a clean, clear plate like I got up here, that means you are dead nuts on. So very precise alignment. So I'll turn off this, turn off interactive, set my brush size for big, and just make him go away. There we go. All right. So say yes, I want to save that. That'll export it to my comp. All right. So now... 
Let's check it out. Well, there we go. So that's the held frame feature. And the thing I love about this is, you know, it just drops right into your flow graph. You fix your problem and you move on. Okay. Excellent, right. Steve. Thanks. Thank you for uh, for humoring me to show that example. <laughs> I was definitely uh, wanted to, to make sure that Nuke users know that they could use Silhouette Paint just in the way that they use regular regular uh, paint nodes or Photoshop for that matter. You don't have to be doing your tracking or uh, or, or auto paint it to take advantage of some of the cool features that you just showed. That's true. And Ross did request that, and so you know we, we fixed him right up. <laughs> and also, we have we have a question regarding some of the uh, the, the clone uh, transforms. Um, you can not only position, but you can scale, rotate, and corner pin um, using the on-screen controls in interactive mode. There's also you pin warping uh, available as well. You left out skew. Ah, and skew. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and there's pin. Uh, don't blow my cover. I'm going to do some pin warp in a little bit. I love the pin warp. That pin warp is so cool. But hey, let's uh, let's check this out. Uh, Nuke is yelling at me here. What's what's Nuke's problem? Um, okay. Um, so this guy would like to quit. So I'm going to quit that guy. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. Um, here's here's my original shot. Okay, and I'm going to put it on bounce. All right, so what happened was we had the uh, usual $5 million product placement, okay? So the nice client paid us big bucks to track their logo into the shot, okay? Problem was the director did not like this wall plug here. thought it detracted from the nice client's logo. So I have to remove this wall plug. Well, it turns out that is a non-trivial problem, okay? So I'm going to show you two things here. I'm going to show you the dual clone brush technique, and I'm going to import Nuke's trackers into Silhouette. You can actually swap trackers back and forth. Nuke trackers into Silhouette, Silhouette trackers into Nuke. It's great fun. Okay, so let's do this, and I'm going to get myself a Silhouette paint node. Hook it up here. Open up the interface and we'll call this dual clone create project. All right. So the, the, the deal being when what we have here, and this is one of these nasty gradient lighting surfaces where you got multiple lights all falling off at different rates. So it's a, nothing but a big giant gradient. So I'm going to punch up a clone brush here. Get myself a decent size. I'm going to try the usual stuff first, okay? Let's try to clone from over here. Okay. All right. No, that's too dark. All right, so let's try it from this side. All right. No, that's too light. Okay, from the top, right? That'll work, huh? From the top. Okay. Oop, no. There is no happy spot for this. The only solution is the, sil is the uh, silhouette paint dual clone brush. I love this. Setting clone brush one, I'm going to set the clone offset thusly. Punch up clone brush two. Set that clone brush thusly. Dial up the dual brush and look what I got down here. You see the ghosty ones on the left and the right? What it's going to do it's going to lift from those two and average them together in the middle. So I'm going to get the perfect average of everything. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Next, I want to do my auto paint gag where I paint the whole darn shot. But I want to use my Nuke trackers. I had to track it in Nuke already. I also want to use, of course, the exact same tracking data. That's a key point. You don't want to use different tracking data for the same problem. So let's go over to the Roto department for a moment. And let's punch up our trackers and tell it I want a point tracker and say, I'd like to import from 
the dual clone brush nuke script, the very one I'm, I'm doing right now. Okay. And boop, there they are. Those are my two trackers from nuke. I'll select them. Click apply. So I want position or translation. We would call it a nuke, a uh, rotation and scaling and okay. Now I'm going to rename this all tracker. Okay. And if I pull out, you can see it has imported the tracks up there and up there. If I were to request for a stabilizing using the wall tracker, it would put up, uh, it, it will stabilize this shot based on these trackers. Okay. So let us go back to not stabilized, return to the paint. Okay. Jump to frame one. Okay. I now have the wall tracker, which has my tracking stuff in it. So I'll select my paint strokes, punch up the wall tracker, set it for match move on all frames. Go. And silhouette paint does all the work for me. Okay. And there we go. There's my shot. All right. Now back to my comp. Yes, I do want to save this. And here we are. Let me back out here a little bit. Get you a nice big view. And there I've got my $5 million product shot plus a painted out wall socket. Okay. No extra charge. <laughs> All right. So there you go. Importing a nuke tracker into silhouette. And of course you can go both ways. Okay. All right. So our next gag is, uh, okay, let me, um, no, I know I want to close this and I want to fire up the pin warp demo. Okay. Okay. You know, when we're trying to do face work, uh, it's, it's a problem because the, um, the faces is elastic and people are always moving around and changing their expression. And it's a, it's a real problem. Uh, now in this particular case, uh, the director did not like the, uh, the closed eye bit. Okay. So the, the, didn't care for the performance there, like the performance here at the beginning of the shot much better. So my mission is to paint these eyes over the entire length of the clip. Okay, so we'll punch over to our silhouette interface. Now I've already done the tracking just to save us some time here. Okay, so tracking is already done. So what I'm gonna do is tell it that I wanna hold frame one. Let me. Punch out here to frame five. So I've got frame one and uh, let me turn off that tracking. So if I hold frame one, let me set this for bounce. I like bounce for this kind of a deal. So you can see frame one is ghosted in there in my, in my onion skin, but uh, I can gr grab the tracking data that I used. I say source match move. And now my held frame, which is frame one, being tracked to the face. Now this will get me, you know, 95% of the action. But faces being what faces are, there's going to be a, a very subtle little deformations going on here. So um, I'm going to switch over to the, um, the uh, detail, the, um, I'm sorry, the alignment, align mode, alignment. And again, we can see where we have some offness. This is where the warp comes in. Okay. The, the pin warp, I've never seen a pin warp before. Pin warp is really cool. You can click anywhere and drag in any direction. Okay. So it gives you like this total complete freedom. It's much more flexible than a grid warp and much easier to deal with than a spline warp. 
So I'm going to uh, set a control point here to line up the nose. And you see I have a little offness over here. I'll put a pin mark there and tuck that in until everything looks lined up. All right, then. We'll come out of the align mode over to the clone mode. I got myself a great big brush. Make sure my opacity is set up. Okay, and paint through those eyes. Okay, so before and after, before and after. Next frame. Paint through those eyes. Okay, next frame. Paint through those eyes. We'll do just one more frame because I suspect that I might have a little alignment. Yeah, I need to tighten up my uh, warp just a tiny bit here. Um, so that little cheek protrusion there. Okay, so I uh, super tune my pin warp, go back to the clone, and bring in my frame one eyes with great elan. All right. So, well, let's, let's see what the finish shot looks like when we're all done. I want to spend all day doing this. So I'm going to close this and say, no, don't save that. And we'll punch over to the finished shot here. So I've already done all the painting here. So there you go. We can use the pin warp to do organic deformations. Again, like I said, it is much more flexible than a grid warp and much easier to deal with than a spline warp. So this is my first pin warp experience, and I just loved it. All right. Okay, next, let's look at a, um, a round tripping through Nuke, okay? So I'm going to punch up this shot here. Get that loading up. New, and we'll close the previous one. Uh, this works better if I move my flow graph over here. Steve, while we're waiting to get you set up, we um, had a question regarding how corner pin works in silhouette. This, essentially, it's actually really simple. I don't, I don't know that Steve has it set up for the rest of his demos, but when you go into interactive mode for the clone source, uh, you, you have an overlay of on-screen controls, and there's four corner points on the edge of the image. You just drag those points, and there's also shortcut keys associated with those so that if you're zoomed way in, you can adjust them uh, manually. Right, right. Yeah, you literally just grab the corner of the <laughs> screen and drag it, and you've got your corner pin right there. So it, it's really, really convenient. One of the things that impressed me about Silhouette Paint is that Marco gave a lot of thought to workflow. Quick keys are right next to each other, you know? QWE, QWE, when you want to switch from rotate to translate to scale. So really smart layout, very efficient user interface. So here's the mission. This, this was a television commercial. And the problem was that they needed this label removed. Let me put this into bounce mode. So they wanted this label gone. All right, so I stabilized it in Nuke. So now this is a stabilized version of it right there, okay? Now, the problem with the usual approach, you try to lay in a, a shape and then do, do a clone shape gag, and the problem because you, you can't match the lighting around the edge. In fact, this was a really difficult problem until Nuke released the Edge Extend node. The Edge Extend node solves this problem beautifully but it has, a, it has a deficiency that only Silhouette Paint can deal with. Let me show you that. So here I've got my track shot. Now behind it, I'm gonna draw this roto, and then I'm gonna invert it. Now this sets me up for this pre-molt, which then sets it up for the Edge Extend node. Now there you go, see? Mr. Edge Extend beautifully blended all these edges into the middle, the problem is I've got essentially a, a blurred area with no detail. So I need a way to bring in the detail. So I'm going to use Silhouette Paint for the detail. I'll select this. 
go get myself a silhouette paint node switch over to silhouette paint and give this a name create a project all right so we're now in silhouette paint all right uh so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clone i'm going to jump to the middle here remember this is a stabilized plate so everything there, there's no trackers here in silhouette all my tracking was done in new so i'm going to clone detail just the detail from the apple into my bald spot and then propagate that over the whole shot and then go back to new so um I'm going to get a uh, clone brush here. I'm going to set it for a good size. Set myself a nice offset. Tell the clone brush to only do detail. This is a concept. I've never seen this before. The first time I ever saw it was here in Silhouette Paint. Look at this. You can look at an image, just the color and just the detail. Now, if I gamma down this viewer, you can see better. Look, look at what the detail, it's all the fiddly little detail, but not the color. And this is what I'm missing. In fact, you can see my bald spot right here. Okay. <laughs> so let me put the viewer gamma back to default and put my viewer back to output. So I am going to clone the detail over my bald spot. There we go. Now I need to propagate this over the entire length of the shot. So I will select my paint layer. There is no tracking here. Remember, this is all stabilized. Okay. So I'm just going to say, do it. Copy that frame after frame after frame. There we go. Okay. So I've got detail on every frame now. So let's go back to Nuke. Say, yes, I do want to save this, of course. And now, boom, Nuke has it. Ta da! All right, we'll go back to our node graph. All right, so we're here now. I now have a completely repaired apple, but it's stabilized. The problem is, if I, un if I reverse the stabilization, my background plate will have received two hits. The first hit was filtering the pixels from the stabilized, and the second hit, be filtering them a second time with the uh, um, inverse operation. So I don't want to hit my background plate. It must be pristine. So I'm going to take my silic my uh, silhouette paint. And remember, I've got my uh, alpha channel here. I'll invert the alpha channel, expand it just a little bit, soften it a little. And then I'm going to feed that into an inverse transform tracker. This removes the tracking that was put in up here. We can see that now. So it's now moving. The problem is I have a uh, double, I've double banged my background plate and I've got all the uh, tracking uh, black fields. So what I want to do is just lift out just and only this and put it back on the original plate. So, because I have my mask all prepped, by the way, I'm going to throw just a whiff of sharpening over the thing because uh, even the repair will have received a little bit of a hit from this, this inverse tracking operation. Do a pre mold. Okay. So, re the reason I expanded it, this is actually a little bit larger than the uh, actual original area. So, I've got a little bit of real apple out here. Okay. That guarantees me a perfect match when I drop it into the clip. So now I have my painted region and a pristine background. And now the director is very pleased. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. That's a great Do you example, have any Steve. Questions? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Excellent example. Yeah. Well, Again, yeah, I love it. It shows how. A silhouette, you just it just goes right into the workflow along with everything else. It's nothing special. 
it, exactly. And once you get used to it, it just becomes just like another node, you know, kind of an Uber node that you can jump into to do uh, advanced paint. One of our one of our users, Dan Smith, who's similar to you, he's done a lot of nuke training in the past. He just made a comment on YouTube that uh, he's been exploring select paint as well. And he was sort of saying that uh, he's finding it speeding up his paint workflow, sort of in the same way that Mocha has sped up some of his tracking workflows. Right. Well, the the thing about another thing, solar, another yeah. thing to uh, I was going to say the, another thing to note. I, I Steve, I'm not sure if you brought it up when you're doing your stabilization, but um, within Silhouette, when you stabilize the viewer, it doesn't degrade the image in any way. It's all doing the stabilization on the fly. So if you track, stabilize, roto, then paint, and then turn the stabilization off, there's been no degradation of the image. Where in Nuke, uh, where Steve was uh, stabilizing or doing reverse transforms, each of those filtering operations degrades the image. So you don't have any of that when you when you work that way in Silhouette. That's right. Yeah, Silhouette does um, a, a virtual stabilization. It's not filtering the pixels, so that there's no degradation at all. And that's that's a, a thing for us Nukers to remember because we're used to thinking in terms of uh, stabilizing damages the pixels, which is why I did this whole process. Okay, because I had stabilized the background. I did not want to use the stabilized background. I wanted the pristine original background. So to avoid the stabilization filtering, which Silhouette does not do. Very good point. So the thing, the thing I like about this is the, it's the productivity and the quality. Okay, it just makes your, your workflow a hell of a lot faster and the quality is there. It is right up there with all your Nuke image processing, 32-bit float, high dynamic range. It's all there. You, you can paint on uh, those high dynamic range images with blown out star fields or sun, sun flares. No problem at all. In fact, <laughs> in fact I did a test uh, when, they, when, when uh, Boris gave me the, the package. Um, I, I pulled out a high dynamic range image and painted on it just to make sure it was really true. <laughs> it was. <laughs> and I'd also just point out uh, for for the people who are viewing who are not Nuke users that everything that Steve covered here in this session, you could be running Silhouette Paint inside of After Effects, inside of Premiere, inside of almost any OFX host. So beyond Nuke, we also support with Silhouette Paint. We support Resolve, uh, Fusion, Vegas Pro. So. It's a it's a very uh, versatile application or a plugin, and for that matter, you could even share this project. Say you're doing your paint, you know, Steve is working in Nuke as a paint artist. He could share that project, and uh, you could open it up and select paint into After Effects and be collaborating on the same shot. Really, the flame, right? Yeah, Nuke the flame. Inter -platform, uh, flame uh, compatibility. Wow, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah, so the project itself, the Silhouette project, actually could be cross-host. Uh, of course, if you have run an auto paint, you're going to rerun the auto paint session generally. But um, it's it's uh, probably I think the only only uh, paint package to go cross-host like this, right, Marco? That I believe think so. Of. Yeah. Yeah. So and yeah, excellent. It, am am I right that no matter which app you use it, it's going to appear identically? The silhouette paint will appear identical. The interface, it, it will. There's, you know, with, with uh, certain color management issues, the, the the way certain hosts work. Uh, you know, for instance, in Flame, uh, you, you know, make certain assumptions about the images. So you may have to uh, toggle uh, the color space in Nuke and maybe do um, a quick auto paint. But uh, jumping between other uh, applications that don't do that, of course, it would be seamless. Perfect. Yeah, the interface as well. Once you open up Silhouette Paint, you're in Silhouette Paint, no matter which host you launch from. I would also mention to another uh, one of the viewers asked this. They said, uh, is, is everything that you're showing here in Silhouette Paint relevant for Silhouette, the full app, standalone application? Because Silhouette actually started as a, as a standalone application. We still have a, a full, robust standalone application, which has a lot more that is not in Silhouette Paint with compositing and keying and uh, even could even uh, support Sapphire filters for that matter as an OFX host. But everything that Steve showed you as far as the, the paint and the, the roto and tracking sort of uh, application part of, of Silhouette Paint, it, it's really just a subset of the full Silhouette. Right, essentially the, the plugin gets you 
one roto node and one paint node, um, you know, hardwired together. Uh, whereas in the standalone, you may want to have multiple paint nodes, multiple roto nodes, multiple trackers. And then, of course, all the other nodes that uh, you get with Silhouette. I believe there's like 140 different nodes at this point. So um, it, it's, it's for a more streamlined workflow where you don't need as much uh, flexibility uh, that you do or, or, or complexity, really, that you might need in the standalone. Yeah, exactly. And we do have uh, beyond there's Steve actually just had created a, a, a well, I think it's almost a half hour long, uh, a really nice uh, intro to Silhouette Paint, uh, which is on our website right now. And beyond that, we have a, a fair amount of Silhouette and Silhouette Paint tutorials. Uh, many have been done by uh, Ben Brownlee or and Mary Poplin from our team. Yeah, both of those guys are really good. Well, they learn from the master, right, Steve? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> no, they didn't learn from me. Uh, Mary Poplin has been her own, uh, her own master for a long time. She's very good. That's actually a great throw to, you know, we have Mary coming up today to do a, a, a live Mocha session. So uh, I believe she's going to be focusing Mocha Pro mostly in After Effects. But again, just like uh, Silhouette Paint, once you're in the Mocha Pro plugin interface, that it, the same workflow will transfer to almost any host. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. And uh, it also, uh, I, I used one of the inputs, but the Silhouette Paint actually has two inputs for uh, cloning. And I did use one today, but just so everybody knows, there are two inputs. And the other thing I liked about it is, is the integration of the tracker with the paint operation. You didn't have to go over here and click on this and move over there and connect that. It's all integrated. You just say, track this. Okay, now use it. And uh, I, I liked how the, the Silhouette tracker seemed to know what you wanted to do. Things were all set up and ready to go. You just turn it on. And, uh, it, it, and it, it's very smooth to move between uh, the tracker and the paint and to use the tracking data with the paint. Very nice. You've done good, Marco. <laughs> well, as always, it's a, it's a kind of a product of uh, working with uh, uh, Paul Miller, a programmer, and uh, other programmers, and uh, you know, getting it all together. But you know, the, the plugin definitely affords the possibility of hardwiring the roto and the tracking directly um, into Paint. And um, as far as the standalone goes, there's uh, something that we introduced with 2020, which were roto and paint templates. So when you create a, a, a new session in Silhouette, you can uh, choose a roto, I'm sorry, a paint template where you get the exact same workflow and the automatic hooking up of nodes uh, for paint so that the tracking data flows seamlessly and there's no other hooking up. So that's what's kind of nice about the plugin that it, it, it uh, does all those steps at once. Uh, but then you can also do that in the standalone. Yeah, so that you, by you the way, really yeah. save a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, the, it, because it's an OFX plugin, I was really impressed with how easy. I just drop it into the right folder, fire up Nuke, there it is, off you go. It, it was a piece of cake to install sil the uh, Silhouette Paint. Very cool, very cool. Well, thank you, Steve. That was an amazing presentation. Um, lots of oh, great shucks, questions Mister. from the audience. Um, yes. Shout out, shout out to Paul Miller, the developer of Silhouette, in the YouTube chat. Thank you, Paul, for chiming in. Um, let's give away um, a license to the Boris Effect Suite. Um, congratulations to Justin Schaefer. Justin Schaefer is the winner from Cedar Rapids Community School District. Justin wins 12 months of everything we make. So congratulations to Justin. He gets a multi-host license for Sapphire, a multi-host license for Continuum. He gets multi-host Mocha Pro standalone and plugin, and he gets the Silhouette standalone and the multi-host Silhouette Paint plugin and the brand new Boris FX Optics, which is a new plugin that we just created um, last month for Photoshop which is a very cool set. Everybody should check it out. If you haven't seen Boris Effects Optics, it's a way to get Sapphire filters in Photoshop along with some other amazing tools. So congratulations to Justin. 
Um, coming up next in our SIGGRAPH presentation at 1.30 East Coast time, uh, we will be chatting with Jonathan Winbush, who is going to um, show us some amazing Unreal and After Effects workflows. He's created this really cool motion graphics open. He'll go through his um, personal kind of workflow techniques. If you guys haven't seen Jonathan present, he's an amazing presenter and an amazing artist. So definitely um, come back with us at 1.30 East Coast time. That is in um, about 40 minutes. We will jump back on live. We'll be giving away another um, suite of the Boris Effects, um, the, another, sorry, another subscription to the Boris Effects suite in um, the 1.30 presentation. Following, uh, following Jonathan at three o'clock, as Ross mentioned, Mary Poplin will be here presenting some uh, Mocha Pro and VFX tracking techniques. Um, that comes up at three o'clock East Coast time again. And following Mary at 4.30 today will be Brendan O'Neill from Bonfire Effects showing his Unreal and Flame workflow, which is definitely going to be a cool presentation, how uh, Brendan is using the the 3D aspect of Unreal, rendering that out and doing final comps in Flame. Um, definitely tune in with us at 4.30 to check out that. And closing out the day at 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time will be John Dickinson, the Director of Motion Graphics for Boris Effects, showing a sneak peek at Particle Illusion 2021 with some new functionality, including 3D camera support in Particle Illusion 2021. So come back at 6 o'clock and... Um, and check out that or just stay with us all day for all these amazing presentations so thank you steve that was amazing as always i love your style um so calm <laughs> uh, so amazing thank you steve it was a great presentation well thank you very much yeah thank you very much for joining and thanks for to everyone for uh tuning in and watching thank you all right, everyone, congratulations, Justin. Um, so everyone come back at 1.30 to check out Winbush and Unreal and After Effects. It's definitely a must-see. All right, we'll see everybody at 1.30.